Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome to my garage. Uh, tonight I'm going to be replacing the upper and lower ball joints on a 2005 Ford F-250. So let's get started. Remove the three screws. Holding in the manual selector. And that should pull right out. And you can see in there, there's a C-clip. There's a C-clip all the way up inside here that needs to come out. It's pretty heavy duty, and I have a buddy helping me out, so you might need to do the same thing. Because it's a pain. You need some pretty heavy duty snap ring pliers. Is that in the alright spot? I think it'll work. As long as you can get them apart. I'm just trying to show the camera here. It started, we got it up off there, um, out of the groove. Now he's got another pick that we're going to try to put behind it and uh, pry it the rest of the way out. There it goes. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Oh, I got a little bit of it. This thing is a pain. It's pretty heavy duty. <laughs> Alright, first we're going to remove the caliper, the whole assembly, with the upper and lower mount bolts. Make sure when you put all these bolts back in, you use the NICs on the threads. It'll help you if you ever have to take it apart again. Alright, once you get your two mount bolts out, you can go ahead and get your caliper off. You might have to pry it some. Watch your brake line up top. You don't want to let this hang from that. Next thing to come off is going to be the rotor. Soft face dead line. After that you can go ahead and remove your ABS sensor, which mine break off when I go to remove them, so I'm going to have to replace them and remove the, va the vacuum line. Remove the mounting clamp. And then remove, then remove your uh, ABS sensor. All right. Next, you want to remove. You can see here. There's. Four studs that come clear through and mount the hub on to the knuckle. So there's you can't see it, but there's four nuts on the back. One, two, three, four on the other side. Sometimes you'll you might run the whole stud out or you might just you're supposed to just take the nut off, but the whole stud might come out.
take these two out. And that one, the whole stud came out. Now what you want to do is get your hub off. So we're going to do that by shocking it. And your heat shield comes off with it. Here you can, now you could go ahead and pull your axle out. Uh, or you could take your nuts off for your ball joints. I'm going to take my nuts for the ball joints off first. So you get to extract the collar pin. In my collar pins, I've been having to drill them out because they're too far recessed in there. I'm putting new ball joints in, so it doesn't really matter if you get all new hardware. Alright, the top nut's off the ball joint, and we have to get the axle out to get the bottom nut off the bottom ball joint. Alright, so the next step is to get this seal right here out. Um, it's pressed in with a special tool. It, that's the only thing retaining the axle from the axle coming out. Um, I haven't found any easy way to get the uh, get the seal out. I've seen a couple other guys where they just get a pry bar behind there and put it in the knuckle of the U the U joint and and they pop it out. But for me, it doesn't seem to work. The thing's just pressed in there too well so um, I usually use a large punch on the other side and I had to hammer it out and damaged it which stinks it's a it's a fifth on rock auto it's a 55 or you can get them for 45 depending on which one you get 45 55 dollar seal um, advanced auto or I'm sorry AutoZone advanced couldn't get it for me and AutoZone wanted a hundred and five dollars so they said they wouldn't even price match uh, Rock Auto because it was like 50 percent so yeah if you can get it out without destroying it that would be great these are these seals were just put in last year too so they're still good seals Alright, so after hammering, and more hammering with that punch, the seal's coming apart. This is the outer seal. And, I said, if you can get it out without destroying it, good job. Um, I cannot. Alright, so I had to beat my seal out and destroy it. Hopefully you can find a better way to get it out maybe to where you could use it if it was salvageable. But you should probably put a new seal in anyways. So once you knock it out, 
that's most of it. There's a ring on the back and and another ring on the front that's gone already, but it's a pretty heavy duty seal. Then your axle should pull out. This is another piece of that seal. I'm going to wait to take it off. This side's shorter than the other side. Alright. Then we remove the bottom nut from the bottom ball joint. Alright, there's the nut off the bottom. I'm going to put these blocks of wood underneath to protect it in case it falls. And shock it with a hammer. Nice sledge. Put a hand in it. There it is. Finally out. Alright, if you can see, there's a corrosion and stuff in there. I'm going to clean it up with a little bit of fine sandpaper. Clean it all out before we go back together, but. As you can see, both sides are shot. The other side's the same as this. Just 153,000 miles on this thing. Bottom one's pretty bad too. So, we're gonna go ahead and press these out now. Press the new ones in. All right, so I don't have a vise. So I don't have the best. Uh, if you had a vise, you would take this where your um, alright so if you had a vise you would uh, put this where the tie rod end connects you would put that in the vise and you could press it out pretty easy I don't have a vise in my garage yet so uh, forgive me but I gotta do this not the best way but it works so I rented this kit from Advanced Auto. It's like $180. Whenever you take it back, you will get all your money back. It's free rental. They just charge you the price of the tool. So it's a pretty good deal. Anyways, moving on. So I'm going to press the bottom uh, ball joint out first. Alright, so first off, on the bottom ball joint only, not on the top, but on the bottom there's a snap ring that you have to get off. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove that first. Thing just rusted up. There's the old snap ring. Alright, now we can press them out. So for the bottom, this is the only one long enough. It's got a cut out, but it'll work. The other ones aren't long enough. So 
I just stand on it since I don't have a vice. But it's not the best. Just take this in. Helps if you have a strong assistant. You have to press the bottom one out first so you can get the top one out. Excuse my method, but it works. So. Instead of waiting until I can go use a buddy's vice. He's done. It's just not the best way to do it. to the top so you go through the hole. Alright, and now to take the upper ball joint out. There it goes. That, getting it to pop is the hardest part. And there's the upper. It's pretty shot. And then to put them in, I do the bottom first and then the top. Make sure you clean. Clean out the uh, where the ball joints seat. You can clean out the groove where the shoulder of the ball joint sits. Like I said, it's not the best method the way I got them out and put them in, but I'm using Moog ball joints. Once again, I bought them on rockauto.com. RockAuto.com. I've compared everything I've bought to Advanced uh, Auto and AutoZone. And Rock Auto is 50% cheaper. Plus, there's a code for 5% off. Uh, it's the best prices I can find. These come with little charts that tell you torque values, also. I believe these are to have grease fittings. Go ahead and seat it.
Alright, so I got it pressed in. The bottom comes with a nail. Whoops. Comes with new hardware, a Zerk to insert, which I'll put in in a few minutes, and a new snap ring. There's the new snap ring on. Nice. All right, and then the pr press in the top. And then I'll put the two zerps in. Last. The top ball joint. It's got this little plug in here for the Zerk I'm going to take out so I can press against it. Pop that out. It's not interfering with pressing it in. Goes in from the top. Go ahead and seat it. 